Hi students, a very good morning to all of you. I am architect Arjun here, assistant professor from K School of Architecture. So in continuation to the topic, so we all know that you know you are studying building services 3. So to further continue, we have uh, our next module that is module number 3 that is mechanical transportation systems in a building. So before that you definitely know the objective of this particular uh, subject that is to understand the mechanical services in a building and how we integrate this meta mechanical services in our architectural designs. Correct? Yes. So proceeding ahead, fundamentally we need to understand what is mechanical transportation. So transporting anything from one point to another point either on a horizontal plane or on a vertical plane with the help of any mechanical equipment is called as mechanical transportation. It's a very simple definition. You all have been studying this from your uh, school days as well. Correct? Yeah. So what do you mean uh, after understanding uh, mechanical transportation definition? So we need to understand what are the different types of mechanical transportation systems uh, used in any building. Uh, can you guys list a few of them? Yes, elevator which is commonly called as a lift. Second one is escalator and third one is the travelator. So according to the VTU syllabus, you will be understanding these three topics in detail. Okay, so let's proceed further. So let me show you some glimpse uh, with the help of some pictures over here for you to understand uh, these three typologies. You would have definitely seen them in one or the other places. So just to you know further give you some sort of understanding. So this is a picture of an elevator or for which we commonly call it as a lift. So you would have seen this definitely in most of the buildings you know which are more than four to five floors where people happen to use uh, to move from one floor to another correct yes so next we have escalator so how does it look it looks like one regular staircase right but yes the staircase moves that's the uh, design part of it and that's the marvel part of it over here so you have this moving staircase that will take you to a different level from one floor to another so this also you would have seen in couple of large scale commercial setups or you would have seen it in airports or you would have also seen it in malls, theaters, etc. Right? Yeah. So next one we have travelator. So this is also something interesting. So this is within the same plane. Uh, it will transport you from one point to another point. So you just stand on the travelator at one point, it will take you to another destination point wherever you need to go. Uh, this, these are commonly found, you know, in airports and in a very large scale hospital setups and other uh, buildings, it's definitely you get to see them. So coming to some brief history about this mechanical transportation systems. So when you, when you talk about elevator, uh, so uh, it is reported that, you know, Archimedes uh, built his very first lift during, you know, 236 BC. So this is what the record says, which means the mechanism was very much developed conceptually during that time itself. And later during 1850s, a uh, well-known elevator company, you all would have heard about Otis. So Otis is a very well-known established company and uh, they were the first people to, you know, invent a safety gear elevator during 1800s is what the record says. So the next history is on the escalator. 
so we just understood how an escalator looks right so it is more or less like a, a moving elevator or it's also called as a inclined elevator or a moving staircase so it was it is known that you know it was first installed in new york city during 1890s yeah so next we have travelator this travelator uh, which is also called as a moving walkway so it was first installed in 1960s in some parts of uk so you can also see the poster the way the travelator invention was celebrated uh, in the uk a uh, couple of years ago so now let's come to an understanding you know a system how an elevator works so for that we need to know what is an elevator so we have various uh, definitions to that and commonly known uh, definitions could be like you know elevator is a device which moves people or goods vertically within a dedicated shaft and also we can define it as an appliance designed to transport people or materials between two or more levels in a vertical direction by the means of a guided car or any platform so this is what is the definition of an elevator all right i hope it's clear to all of you yes so let's proceed further so with respect to this mechanical transportation systems we are also guided by some norms and regulations so i hope you all have definitely heard about the word nbc correct exactly it is called as national building code of india so under that particular code we have various parts so in that when you study part 8 under building services we have something called as installation of lifts and escalators so there are certain set of rules regulations and things that need one has to follow uh, so that we are in compliance with lot of other things when it comes to design part of mechanical transportation system okay so now under part 8 you have various sections so under section number 5 uh, we the uh, nbc deals with installation of lifts and escalators so let's understand quite a bit of uh, uh, regulations from this particular code uh, so uh, to proceed further we need to understand what are the major parts of any conventional elevator so coming from the bottom most part we have something called as lift pit over here so this lift pit is more or less you know this is the portion that you see if i assume this as my ground level or any basement level this lift pit is slightly sunken from that established floor level all right yeah so the next part is the lift hoist way or we call it as a lift shaft this vertical uh, open space is what we call it as a vertical lift shaft or a hoist way where the elevator car takes you up and down to various floor levels and next we have this landing doors i hope you can see this in the picture yes so these landing doors are used in order to open they open out when the car ends or you know terminates at that particular floor level and the doors are open and you can access the car so this is what we call it as landing doors next we have lift car so this is the mechanism that ports you back and forth meaning up and down across various um, floor across various floors is what we call it as a lift car so this entire unit is controlled by one system that we place it on top of the lift shaft which we call it as lift machine room it is also in a short form we call it as lmr so it is called as lift machine room where 
uh, the entire mechanism is put at top of the lift shaft for its working medium okay is this clear yes so moving further okay this is a picture that has been taken from the NBC rule book so you can see here you have your lift shaft what I'm showing over here is the lift shaft and this is the sizing of the lift car and this is the sizing of the lift machine room which is kept above the lift shaft that is why you see this in dotted line all right yeah so also note this alphabet something is written here alphabet a alphabet c alphabet b alphabet d correct and there is also alphabet c and alphabet e over here so which means you have a b c d and e so keep this in mind we'll come back to this alphabets very soon what they are all right so if you take a cross section uh, of this particular elevator shaft this is how it looks do you see this you can either treat this as an elevation or if you want to understand it via section also it's quite uh, the information will be more or less the same so this is the floor level and this is the lift pit that you saw this is the again a floor level this is the opening door and then you have your lift machine room on top of this shaft and you have a trap door for so any sort of emergency accessing to this particular room all right is this clear yes so proceeding further uh, now we need to understand the meaning of various components that we saw in the picture previously so what do you mean by your lift shaft and why is that so important for us so lift shaft provides the movement of lift car between the floors definitely yes and they had they need to be fire resistant in their design and uh, they need to be also uh, be protected from various point of view and uh, because in case of any fire the lift operation has to be ensured is not impaired by any fire breaking out on any floors of a building okay and then no equipment except that is forming a part of the lift uh, shall be kept in the lift shaft or lift well meaning anything related to the servicing of the lift shaft or which is a part of the elevator system should only be kept in the lift shaft no other equipments should be kept there all right yes so next is the lift pit so you can more or less call it like you know a mini basement because you know a uh, lot of it involves many or all the installation requirements of the lift car to be operated there so a lift pit shall be provided at the bottom of the lift shaft which we saw in the picture previously right yes and it should and also the construction should be uh, very efficiently done and it should be maintained in a dry and clean condition and necessary provisions shall be made for quick evacuation of any sort of water drainage in case of any stray water that gets accumulated in the lift pit all right and in case uh, if the lift pit exceeds more than 1.5 meter then definitely we have to give some sort of descending mechanism for the service person to get down into the lift pit and do some sort of services or repairing for the components that are kept in the lift, uh, lift pit below all right yeah next we have lift machine room which you all know it is kept on the top of the lift shaft so meaning the entire controlling system or the controlling machines and other equipments of the lift installation is placed in the machine room speed governors and uh, other safety devices shall also be placed there all right so this shall be adequately lit 
and also rendered with fire protection and weatherproofing because there are a lot of controlling machines uh, that are kept inside this machine room so definitely they need to be uh, lit properly for various service requirements and also be fire protected and weatherproof for all uh, known reasons okay yeah so next we have landing doors so at every floor the lift shaft will have a landing door because that is the means through which the lift car will be accessed all right so such a door shall be fitted with efficient locking system to ensure that you know they don't open randomly they open only when the lift car has reached that particular landing level otherwise uh, on the safety basis those when you open the lift door then you will end up falling into the lift shaft so in that case the landing door will open only when the lift car reaches to that particular landing level where you are standing all right yes and in case you know when the doors uh, uh, when they jam or you know when they when you are unable to open out there should be some sort of a special key that is kept beside the door in order to open the door in case of any emergency situations all right yes so next we have lift car uh, so lift car is an enclosure that moves in the vertical shaft uh, which carries either passengers or goods from one level to another level in a multi story building so most modern elevators are operated by electric motors so with the help of a counterweight system or with the help of, of a pull or a push system so uh, the, the lift car is you know held with the help of such mechanical systems and they move up and down accordingly all right yeah so we will be understanding how different types of the lift and you know how they all work so next we need to be understanding different parts of a lift car so so now that you know this lift car is an enclosure where a passenger or goods move up and down between any two floors so that car also has some parts to it so meaning we have the lift uh, car floor we have the wall enclosure on all the three sides and then we have a ceiling then we have a guided rail inside so that if anyone is feeling some sort of discomfort inside the car can hold it then we have display panels meaning you will have the floor numbers written you will have a panel and uh, where you know you can choose the button of to which floor you want to access so you have two such pack, uh, car operating panels one car operating panel is on the outside of the lift shaft and another operating panel is on the inside of the lift car okay and then we have an emergency trap door any during any sort of uh, emergencies inside the car uh, if a service personnel has to rescue you or he has to make sure you need to come out from the lift car these trap doors are very very essential during emergency times all right so these are the different parts of a lift car yeah so coming back to that same diagram of that nbc what we saw some time back i just told you to remember the alphabets a b c d and e right yes so we will understand understand what it means so if you see here alphabet a shall mean the lift car sizing alphabet a and alphabet b shall be the width and depth of the lift car all right and alphabet c and alphabet d shall be the sizing of your lift shaft am i clear yes i shall repeat alphabet a and alphabet b will give you the sizing of the lift car alphabet c and alphabet d shall give you the sizing of the lift shaft 
So let's understand the sizing. Let's take one example. So uh, we all know that you know the lift car or the lift shaft will be decided based on the capacity of the lift. Correct. What does capacity mean? It is definitely designed for some number of people to use it. Correct. If it is a residence, there will be some amount of people, you know, going from one floor to another. If it's an independent house or if it's an apartment complex, then we have more number of capacity because a lot of families keep using it. And if it is a commercial setup, then again, it's public who will be using it. If it's an industrial setup, then workers keep using that so first we need to design and understand for how many persons are we designing this lift shaft so nvc also gives you that like you know for these many number of people so this is the kind of weightage that is in terms of kgs that a person's weigh and then accordingly the car size and the lift shaft size are given over here do you understand this yes so if we take an example over here for example if you need to be designing a lift uh, elevator for 10 people capacity then the load will be 680 kgs and the lift car size shall be 1300 by 1350 then accordingly the lift shaft the sizing of the lift shaft shall be 1900 by 2100 and also the lift car opening size shall be minimum of 800 is this clear yes so this is what is something that we have to be picking from the nbc all right so if you also open couple of uh, lift elevator company websites you will also find similar dimensions which will be followed because it's a standard dimension that one has to follow but some sort of ambience or some sort of features might be different from one uh, company to another company we will also understand that a bit later okay yeah so we also have the spit depths that have been given and also you know the machine room sizing for any elevator shaft accordingly okay so this has also been mentioned in the nbc so if you open this and check so you know based on the speed the speed is given in meters per second over here all this bold text what you see is the speed that has been given in meters per second meaning when a lift car is moving from one floor to another this is the speed at which one has to cater to so this speed uh, has a correlation to the pit depth as well as the lift machine room like what you can see here the depth and the width of the machine room is mentioned here and also the pit depths are mentioned over here all right yes so let's proceed further uh, so after understanding the various components of an elevator now let's understand various arrangements that we can do for a lift uh, typologies here so as per nbc you can see that you know you can place uh, three elevators one beside the other or two elevators facing opposite to each other this makes a four elevator configuration and you have three plus three that is six which is again facing each other and these are four and four totally eight which are again facing each other you can also see some passage gap over here yes yeah these are called as lift lobby so we will definitely come back to this again a little later so you can also have some sort of other arrangements which is shown here so this is, as an architect we would also like to design the arrangements correct 
yes so you cannot uh, violate the nbc norms also uh, with that so maximum number of lifts that can be placed one beside the other can be four if you go beyond four you know your lift lobby spaces will get increased because there'll be a lot of people getting accumulated here in order to use the upper levels right so when you have more number of elevators spaced one beside the other uh, which means that you know people get uh, accumulated in front of the lift shaft which is which we call it as the lift lobby space and uh, definitely you need to widen them because the capacity uh, or the waiting period is dependent on that and people end up standing here so in a way it is always better to have a smaller configurations like this what is being shown here all right in case if you want to go in a very high rise or rather in a skyscrapers that we call these days you will also see a configuration spaces where you know which is one beside the other more than five or six that time your lobby spaces are definitely bound to widen because you have a thoroughfare movement of people who are waiting for the lift shaft outside and also for the people who are inside the lift uh, car to come out so these are the main two considerations when you are designing a lift lobby space okay yeah so what are the factors you know that we one has to consider for the positioning of the lifts so the lift should be easily accessible from all entrances uh, of the building uh, for maximum efficiency they should be grouped near the center of the building because uh, when there is a lot of public movement or the public traffic happening in a building you should not go in search of such uh, uh, ancillary or supporting facilities meaning either a lift or either a escalator or something like that so it needs to be placed in a very evident location so that as soon as you enter you should be able to spot them without any confusion all right so preferred not more than four lifts to be arranged in the same row uh, if you want to place it more than four then the lift lobby spaces uh, has to be increased and that is also a waste of you know common spaces in any commercial or a residential spaces correct because the occupancy uh, is more uh, uh, favorable with respect to the number of people using that particular space and it is also proportionately reflecting to your uh, fa uh, monetary uh, things related there so you can't waste a space for common facilities too much so you need to also strike a balance between the spaces that will be used accordingly in those uh, typologies further the corridor should be wide enough to allow the sufficient space for waiting passengers as well as the through passengers that is what we spoke some time back meaning the lift lobby space should have enough uh, landing area so that you know there is one set of passengers already who are waiting for the lift to arrive the lift car to arrive and second thing is the people who are already in the lift car they need to come out so you need to also plan that sufficient width of the corridor space okay yeah so then this is again uh, in continuation to that we have the location of the lift lobby so we all know that you know it has to be uh, kept in a very main entrance uh, area which is very close to the main entrance area of the building to have a sufficient uh, uh, and efficient movement of people without having any clutter within the lobby spaces okay then the noise generated by the lift machinery and the cars should be considered while placing them uh, if there are any sensitive areas uh, for example you might have uh, uh, in any hospitals or in any uh, conditioned uh, clean room environment system spaces uh, you need to be very careful in placing the elevators definitely it has to be put in a very uh, 
thorough moving traffic area because emergencies are of a major concern you can't uh, locate it in some random corner and ask people to keep searching secondly you know it had should not be placed or uh, beside any sensitive areas like you know if you have any uh, operation theaters or if you have any diagnostic centers or if you have any testing centers so you need to avoid placing them placing these uh, elevators closer to such areas is what it means clear yeah so uh, in our coming videos let's understand the classification of an elevator all right so till now we have understood what a mechanical transportation means and then we have understood a brief history and then we have also understood what are the different kinds of uh, uh, mechanical transportation systems that is used in any building that is uh, escalator travelator and an elevator and we have understood about the elevator its parts and you know how we place them and uh, what are the uh, national building code regulations that one has to be following during the designing of any elevator and then now in the coming video let's understand the classification of the elevators all right thank you see you soon